Hello, it's Tristan here from Zebra Invest and today I'm just standing outside one of our latest projects on King Street. We're right in the centre of Norwich and these two properties came up both together, this one and this one, came together as a job lot advertised by a local, well, slightly out of area commercial agent, really friendly guy, a um, company called Fennel. And they had both of the properties on the market for sale for £375,000. And we ended up purchasing both of them together for £355,000. But we've got quite a job to kind of put the two of them back together. They're actually locally listed, um, which means we've kind of just got to keep them looking nice, try and keep the historic character in the place and put them all back together. But you can kind of tell, just looking from the outside, most of the character and everything has been ripped and stripped out of both of these. So what's the idea? What's the plan, Tristan? So what I'll do is I'll just walk down a little bit so you can just see over my shoulder. And we've got here, we've got a kebab shop. Um, and with the kebab shop, the floors stick like anything. Um, but the idea is we want to convert this whole building into a um, two-bedroom townhouse. The idea is to use it for short-term rental. Um, we'll use our friends Liam at Ginger and Gold to help rent it and manage it out in future. The idea is that downstairs we'll have an open plan kitchen living space and then the upstairs will have a bathroom and an ensuite and two decent sized bedrooms. But that's the plan of that, but that one's on hold at the moment because the budget has kind of gone a little bit further than we wanted to and um, where, where originally we were trying to borrow money through a company called Catalyst who I've used before but unfortunately they weren't happy to kind of move forward or lend at the level that we needed them to so we ended up going to Kirsty at Together um, who then fortunately put in re, um, funds for us to be able to get this bridging product across the line but a retype of the existing valuation. So what that means is if you've got an existing valuation, you might be able to go to a new lender with that same valuation and you get someone else to then lend against it. So that's exactly what we did here. Um, we had them retype up the valuation and then we've instead, we're costing around about, um, it's about 0.9% interest because these are commercial buildings. And the idea here on this side We've got a restaurant downstairs, or was a restaurant, and then upstairs we already had a three bedroom flat. So what we needed to do was get a lawful development certificate in place. And the idea is, is because on the first floor, um, actually part of it was technically classed as a restaurant, so dining area. But what we've done with that, we've got a lawful development certificate to establish its 10 years worth of continued use as a living space. And that means that space can then be used inside the flat. So upstairs you'll see it's a huge property. Um, and we've, there's been a lot of work gone into it. We've stripped out uh, a few different bits. So I'll walk you around and show you what, exactly what we've done and why we've done it. And then downstairs, the idea is uh, we're going to be using Class MA to convert the kitchen at the rear of the property into an extra living space. So let's turn you around and take you inside. So here we go, heading into number 42. And if you notice, cheeky little sign in the window. So anyone passing through to where all the commercial agents and the estate agents are knows exactly who's bought it. And hopefully they might tap us up to give us another little deal. So then when we come inside, you can see this used to be a tapas restaurant. Um, just in this corner here was where we had a bar. The whole bar's all being completely stripped out. Um, along this wall, um, they used to have all kind of cladding. We've taken all of that out as well. We've got a huge gas meter in there that's doing absolutely nothing. There's no gas being used in the property at the moment. And what we do is whenever we take on a property, the first thing you should do, and admittedly we didn't do it quite as soon as we should, but you should cut off all the electrics, put in some temporary sockets, ready for the electricians, and the, oh sorry, ready for the team on site to then kind of crack out and rip out the property. One of the bits that we've got here, we've made the place, the house, look like a grow room. So you would have seen on my other project at Hilo Road, we've been using something called Super Quilt. And the idea is here, you can hit the same uh, energy performance levels as... Um, 40 mil of, I believe, of um, PIR insulation, so Celatex. And by fitting that, we've actually fitted it to the whole of the basement. So that means the whole of the ground floor is already insulated, which means we should hit, um, hit the EPC regulations that we need for the property. The next bit that we've done is when we've had our structural engineer in the property, he noticed that, and you'll see as you go through the property, none of the walls line up. So what we've actually done here is we've added in a new steel beam and put a concrete pad in the floor in the basement. The idea is here, if any more weight, any more stress, any more movement happens in the building, it's going to be completely supported and taken by this steel beam. Uh, and that means that the property shouldn't move any further or go anywhere else. The other bit that you can see, if I just turn this around again, is originally we actually had a toilet on the left-hand side here. And what we've done is we've blocked up the side there. You can see that. 
and then we've put blocks across the top. But these are the seven Newton heavy duty kind of bricks. And the idea is that way, if there's any load, any weight from those joists that are running through the ceiling, um, it takes all of that dead load right there. And that reduces the amount of weight and stress that's going to be on this beam in this part of the building. The other bit is I don't have any lights on in there. You can see there's another wall that we've done exactly the same because there's another timber beam running through. And again, by taking the load off there, again, we're reducing the amount of work that um, beam's doing and then we're actually spreading um, the weight through the building. Then the other bit that we've done, the idea here, as you can see, that was the old toilet. Sorry, we don't have any light here, but we've cut out a new window. Um, and with the planning commission that we should be getting for it, that means we've got a window and light to come in. But originally there was a doorway there um, and we've just reopened it up, so then this can end up being some nice living space. So typically I would go up the stairs and show you around up here, um, but unfortunately it's got a bit of rubbish in there which is just being cleared out at the moment. Um, but the idea here is we're going to be turning this into its own front door for, the, for its own house. So we're going to put a new front door in here, and then we're going to put a new little hallway alleyway that goes straight upstairs. And where we've already, and one of the first things you do, if you're going to cut um, split a property into two properties or you've got a commercial element and a residential element you need to make sure that it complies with acoustic standards for building control so we've had an acoustic engineer they've designed a structure where we have two separate walls very close with insulation in between them so then that way noise can't pass through from one part of the property into the other and again in here we've got to put in a suspended ceiling and by putting in the suspended ceiling again the noise can't travel between up and above so that's that. Then if we turn around, and this is our little courtyard. Well, it's not our courtyard, but we have rights of access to it just through this hallway. Um, and you can see here, originally it's got this um, fire escape steps. And these were serving the flat upstairs, which was known as 42A. So 42A is soon just going to be downstairs with a new front door. But by getting rid of this and putting a new door up there, it then almost looks as you walk up to it, just like a townhouse. So that's the plan of action there. I'll take you upstairs and show you in. So we've done quite a lot of work to this place, which I haven't uh, done a video on before. But you can see here, we're in the entrance in the hallway, and that's where the stairs turn around and come downstairs. But the thing is, this wall here, you can see, this wall here, this is the load-bearing wall where all the load from the whole of the building passes down and through. But you see the stairs are on the left-hand side. So this is where the building kind of wraps in a really odd shape because it kind of goes down and back on itself. So this is where, underneath here, we've put in that extra steel to be able to take that load through the building. Um, and then what we've got in the back here, originally we had two bathrooms. We had a bathroom here and another one here. And that meant there was no light transferring through into the rest of it. And there was a kitchen just in the back in the corner there. So this has all been ripped out. And you can see there was this colossal waste of space, again, has been removed. And you can now see that this will end up becoming, this is going to have like a kitchen in that end. And then we'll have a sofa and living space in here as well. So it should end up being... Quite a nice communal area for people to use and live in. And then if we then come through and we had at the front, this is where I said it used to technically be classed as a dining space for a restaurant. Um, but you can see it's actually, you know, colossal sized room. Um, and we've just sat there and thought, well, if we put the stud work in between the two, we can split it quite neatly into two separate bedrooms. And then that way, um, at the end of the day, the idea is that this is going to be an HMO at the back of it. But the property has been split neatly into two. Stud work works run down, the run down there, and we've got the new door frame. And then if we go on the other side, there's a bit more of a story to this, but I'll tell you the rest of it upstairs. But we've taken out the chimney stack, and you can see, if you see that line where the edge of the window was, that's where the room originally stopped. So we've added probably about an extra five feet of, you know, no, sorry, not five foot, two, three foot worth of space just by taking out that wall. And that means it's going to be a really generous sized bedroom. Um, the electricians have already been in and they've come around to work out what materials they need to get the place all back together. Um, and they're going to be coming in next week, as are the plumbers. So we're just going to spin and we'll head upstairs. Head on up. And here you can see this is where you've got that. There's a little bit of an odd landing up here. So a load of space there. So what we've done here, originally we started with an absolutely massive bedroom up here. Um, it had tons of space in the place, but it had the old, where it was a restaurant downstairs, it had a chimney that ran all the way through the building. So the chimney has been taken out and stripped out to the loft. And then in the loft, it didn't have any insulation at all. So um, Mike, who helps us out, he's had the, had the pleasure of putting all the insulation in there. 
Um, and actually, because we know what's grade of insulation we're putting into the loft, we can actually make sure that we hit the U values and the standard that the EPC requires. And then what we've done where this room was so big, we've actually put in, you can see the stud work we put in here. And this is allowed to have a shower room. So we've got a shower room with a toilet and a sink going in. And that'll be a nice en suite for this room. And then on the other side of it, you can see, nice and clean in here, um, you can barely see, but we're going to put in a family bathroom up here, a communal bathroom for people to use. Then we come around down here in the hallway, um, and you can see we've got another bathroom. So in here we're putting a shower room, so we're going to have a full width shower, another toilet and a sink in here. And we're getting, with this cupboard here, we're actually going to change it round so you can have a door on the front of it. And the idea being then you can have your hoover, um, an ironing board or whatever else, all kind of stored and hidden away in there. Then if we come round, you can see in the front room, when we took the property on, um, it had its original Georgian beams. And the Georgian beams, they just aren't designed for the amount of furniture and the way people live these days. So the floors just bounced incredibly. So we've replaced all the floors through here. And we've run, and you can just about see it all the way down the side here. We've run new wall plates and then run new joists all the way across. But one of the main things we're doing, as I said earlier, we're trying to make sure we can hit the energy performance ratings that are needed for... Uh, a, you know, a conversion or for a, a new property. So what we've done here, we've got 50 millimeters of PIR um, or Celatex insulation. And the idea is that way, this will keep nice and warm. So all the external walls are insulated. And that was interesting. When we did, we were going through the rest of the property, we actually found that the rear section of the property has got insulated plasterboard. And that's where it's got plasterboard with insulation attached to the back of it. So the back of the property is already up to standard. The loft, we've now got the insulation in. We've got a bit more to put in in this loft. Um, but that just means that we're up to regs. And the other bit, um, so what we're doing, just to kind of explain why we have, no longer have any chimney stacks. So we put in a loft hatch at the very beginning. And the reason we put the loft hatch in is because we need to make sure we get the insulation up to regulations. Um, and as we went up there, we realized it's quite a large space. You can't really see um, quite a large space, but it didn't have a firewall breaking the two properties. So we put a new firewall in. But the main bit was, was that this wall, you can see that line just there. That's where there was a wall that ran all the way across here. And when we used a laser measure, we could see just how deep this chimney stack was. So if we took the chimney stack out, we got that extra space. So it took about a week or so of hard graft and dirt and muck and dust to get the whole thing out, um, which the chaps uh, thoroughly enjoyed, um, just to rip that out. But we think it's a well-worthy addition to the place. And when we did that, again, we had to put in a new wall plate. And a new wall plate, that just means it's going to be able to hold the joist for the floor. Below that, that stud work is structural. So then it reinforces and holds, the, uh, holds it in place so it won't move anywhere. And again, the ceiling, we have, we've got a new ceiling in here just to match up as well. But there you go, you can see, it's an absolute colossal project that we've taken on here on this side, and we're yet to even start with the next one. Um, but it should turn around, at the end of the day, it'd be a beautiful, um, fingers crossed we get the planning all sorted, six bedroom HMO, um, sat bang in the city center, and with an office downstairs as well. So if we get roughly, um, Six bedrooms rented out, and we're hoping to rent them out for something around about an average of about £600 a room because we've got a couple with the en suites. We've got some really nice sized rooms, we're going to put some decent features in there, use some nice doors, and really kind of you know make the place look fantastic. We should be able to get £3,600 a month out of the property at the back, as well as about six seven pounds a month rent for the office downstairs. So, fingers crossed, it should be a really good cash flowing asset. And with this one, once we refinance the property, we should be able to pull out most of the cash to then be able to go again. Anyway, I'll come back for another video and do the figures later. Have a good day.